We're starting to approach the start of a new year and hopefully a bright future for the RPG genre. Larian Studios absolutely killed it this year as Baldur's Gate 3 was a massive, massive success beyond what even Larian Studios themselves thought was possible for their little niche RPG as Sven called it in the past. But before we get into what's next, a quick message from today's video sponsor, Factor. I'm kind of strapped for time running a tavern and everything. Hey buddy, I'm cutting you off. Factor. Grocery shopping is stressful. Factor. I'm playing games and just want a quick nutritious meal so I can get back at it. Factor. Factor is back on the channel, folks, and they're here to deliver you fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. All you gotta do is heat and enjoy. It takes two minutes, seriously. During this busy holiday season, skip the stress of meal prepping and choose from 35 plus weekly flavor packed meals that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences. Jalapeno lime cheddar chicken, homestyle turkey and herb gravy, Casey Fundido, and the list goes on. Factor also offers calorie smart meals with less than 550 calories per serving. Probably smart during the holiday season to look into that. Outside of these meals actually being delicious, the biggest perk for myself is of course having a go-to lunch or dinner solution, especially during game releases where the little free time I have is of course meant for friends, family, and working out, not for grocery shopping or cooking and meal price. I suck at both of those, man. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code WOLFHEART50 to get 50% off your first factor box. That's factor75.com. Code Wolfheart50 for half off your first delicious box. Back to the video. So let's start off with what's left in 2023. And I am going to leave chapter markers below, but you definitely want to at least check out the final chapter marker of this video. First up is the Game Awards on December 7th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And do note that I will be live streaming the awards on my YouTube and Twitch channel. It's probably going to be a pretty crazy night because Baldur's Gate 3 alongside Alan Wake 2 has been nominated for eight different categories. Eight. Game of the Year, Best Game Direction, Best Narrative, Best Score and Music, Best Performance with Astarion's voice actor, Neil Nuban, Best Community Support, Best RPG, and Best Multiplayer. And keep in mind, this particular event ran by Jeff Keighley has become the Game Awards, the most popular and most important awards ceremony of the year for games, regardless of your personal feelings on awards in general. Before we get deeper into it, on Larian's Game Awards nomination tweet, if you click read more, we got some news to go along with it. Xbox fans and fans of physical media, watch this space for a formal announcement. It's going to be a busy week. So to me, that sounds like during the Game Awards, Larian will likely have a paid advertisement slot where they announce the Xbox version of the game alongside physical media. As most of you are aware, Baldur's Gate 3 launched as a digital game only. So Xbox fans, we're not sure yet if you'll be getting your Baldur's Gate 3 experience in 2023 or perhaps 2024. Definitely still possible for 2023 though, but at the very least I would expect an announcement at the Game Awards, which at this point I can almost guarantee that announcement will give you an official date. Very excited for the Xbox community, and man, what I would give to be able to relive my first time experience in BG3 again. Ha, huh. I'm envious of you all. Be careful of all the news you read though, as we have some news organizations like Eurogamer putting out articles with the title of Baldur's Gate 3's Xbox release date has been confirmed, leak suggests. The fuck does that mean? And then Larian's director of publishing tweeting news to me regarding that article. <laughs> Oh man. Now physical copy news is also pretty cool. With a special game like Baldur's Gate 3, many of us gamers are looking to have something physical that we can put on our shelves to, you know, represent this special experience that we have had. And believe it or not, there's actually a lot of gamers out there. I've seen a lot of comments where people say things such as, I bought this game on PS5 and PC, or I bought it on Steam and GOG, just to show support to Larian. That's pretty incredible. It's usually just not the vibe in the gaming industry. So really cool to see people saying things like that. Now, I'm not sure if the physical copies will be limited to certain platforms or how hard they are going to be able to obtain. Like the collector's edition sold out pretty fast. No idea, but I excitedly wait for more news. Now back to the game awards. And then after this section, we'll talk about the 2024 future of Larian and beyond. Now do note that you can cast your votes for these different categories by going to thegameawards.com and I'll leave a link down below. Exercise your right to vote, kids. Obviously the big award here is game of the year, of course. Whatever game wins this title, it's not only just a moment of great excitement and joy for the company 
themselves that wins the title, but also from a marketing standpoint, I would imagine that this is pretty big. The winner gets to put game of the year in all of their sales pitches, more and better game devs will compete and strive to want to work at a game of the year company, which is good for us consumers. Every news media outlet will be reporting on this and so on. The nominees for this category are Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, all very well received games for this year. The only game that I played on this list is Baldur's Gate 3, and of course I'm already biased towards wanting it to win, but even if I played them all and loved them equally, I think it's fair to say that Baldur's Gate 3 is the most innovative, the largest, the most ambitious, and of course the riskiest project of them all and it still managed to be highly successful. And I think all of that does carry some weight here, not to mention it's Larian Studios game. There's no Nintendo backing them. There's no Epic Games publisher. It's Larian Studios. Really cool. And of course, as a huge fan of the RPG genre, Baldur's Gate 3 is really the only RPG in the game of the year nominees here. The, the closest second place would be Tears of the Kingdom, but most agree that it's more of an action adventure and i want the rpg genre to push forward as a whole i want more attention on this genre i want more games i want more good companies as for the other categories i really want baldur's gate 3 to win best rpg of course i don't think any other game comes even close in this particular category this is actually the only nomination that starfield got out of all of them but I don't think we have to worry about Starfield overtaking Baldur's Gate 3 here. It's actually kind of funny. Baldur's Gate 3 announces their official PC release date and also PS5 at the time. And then Bethesda comes in and announces Starfield just a week later. Kind of an interesting move. Maybe a little effed up. So Larian Studios says, fuck it, we're moving our game up a month, which is basically unheard of, and then proceeds to absolutely destroy Starfield in terms of making positive waves in the industry for the rest of the damn year. I'm also rooting for Baldur's Gate 3 to win best score in music. There's definitely some tough competition here, but Baldur's Gate 3 had a few standout songs that really moved me personally. For example, the song Raphael's Final Act, when it comes in, it's like a moment of shock for most gamers, like... Holy crap, this is about to really go down. It's also an extremely unique song and unexpected, but in a really good way, in my opinion. It's got this Phantom of the Opera feel to it. It's just so damn cool. The timing of it is just perfect for that scene that is taking place. And Larian had a few other standout songs as well. I also really liked how Bobby was able to tie in the theme melody of Baldur's Gate 3 into so many of the songs in the soundtrack while still allowing each song to be their own individual song. It really brings things together, making it all feel connected. Shout out to Borislav, AKA Bobby, the composer for the Divinity series and also Baldur's Gate 3. I met him in person in Belgium, wonderful person, very humble, extremely nice, and I'm really rooting for him. I also, of course, want Neil Newbon to win best performance, but there is some really tough competition here. All of the Baldur's Gate 3 voice actors, though, have done such a phenomenal job, and I think they've all done a lot for this game, and they continue to do a lot for the game. And I'd be lying if I said that I didn't want Baldur's Gate 3 to also win best narrative. Some of you may be aware Jim Southworth, Larian's cinematic animation lead, has unfortunately passed away recently. And he was a huge part of Larian and a huge part of how Baldur's Gate 3's cinematic narrative was able to play out. And I think that would be nice, a nice win in his honor. Baldur's Gate 3 could win all of the awards that they're nominated for, though, and I would be very, very happy with that. Larian Studios is clearly a standout company. I want other companies to look up to them. I want big AAA companies to look at Larian and say, maybe we should do things more like them. And I want us consumers to hold those companies accountable for their shady actions that we've seen a lot of over the years. So Larian is kind of like a beacon of hope in the industry. So they deserve all the praise that's coming their way. All right, now let's talk about the future, future of Larian Studios, you know, 2024 and beyond, and what could possibly be next. So a lot of people have been asking about DLCs and saying things such as making DLCs would be like creating money printing machines for Larian Studios. And although there's probably some truth in that, don't forget that this game is under the Wizards of the Coast license. Larian can't just do whatever they want whenever they want. They have to obtain licenses or expand their current license. It's probably more complex than you would 
think this is also likely why you don't see Larian dropping Baldur's Gate 3 merch left and right and selling owlbear stuffed animals and things like that, because they likely need a license to do all that. That doesn't mean that a DLC won't happen, but at this time, there's currently no concrete evidence that a DLC is coming, but I would definitely expect more patches that will probably come with some extra little gameplay additions. The latest talk of the block has been an honor mode achievement that supposedly showed up on the GOG store, and this would likely be a mode where you can't reload, so if someone dies, they're dead. And if you die, you have to start the game over. What we do know, though, that is coming is something big. Sven tweeted this yesterday. This is a real honor, especially in a year with so many releases. Seeing our little niche RPG make such waves is very motivating. I wish I could tell you about our next big game, but this is really encouraging us to ensure it pushes many boundaries. I'm very excited about it. So yeah, Larian is underway with their next big project. They probably haven't started full production for it yet, but I would imagine that, you know, the plan has been formed and the writers have probably been going at it. In the past, Fen did say something along the lines of our next project, preferring that it be a bit smaller in scale. I'm not sure if I'm quoting him correctly, but something along those lines. And while that still may remain true when comparing their next game to Baldur's Gate 3 specifically, it still kind of feels like this next project of theirs, of theirs is going to be pretty gigantic. We have no idea if this will be a return to their Divinity series, or perhaps a Baldur's Gate 4, or maybe a completely different universe under a different license. Now, the benefit of their Divinity series is that Larian owns that franchise completely, so they don't need to obtain any licenses, which would save them money, of course, either from the purchasing of a license itself or perhaps profit sharing. We have no idea how these deals actually go down. And since Larian is one of the big names of the industry now, their next game will likely sell really well, even if it doesn't turn out to be as good as Baldur's Gate 3. So this is a prime time for Larian to really sell a game of their own. Some people are wondering about Larian's Divinity Fallen Heroes project, which would possibly have been the game that came out if they didn't get the Baldur's Gate 3 license. But Sven did say in the past that that project is no more and that it's gone for good. So I wouldn't expect that game to be it, but things do change, so I guess you never know. Now, would Larian change genres, like perhaps make an action RPG or even something totally different? Probably not. They have this really successful formula and it's still in high demand from gamers. Not to mention the engine that they created works really well for the formula that they have. And their entire team is really experienced now with creating this turn-based CRPG sandboxy style game. But then again, Larian probably has a ton of resources now, so they might be able to do anything that they wanted to. The great thing about that tweet though is that Sven said that he's been encouraged to ensure that this next game does push many boundaries. So that's exciting to think about as to what that would entail. And Larian Studios certainly pushed a ton of boundaries with Baldur's Gate 3. We also got a tweet from Larian's director of publishing that says, instant noodle kind of work week, so much to do, so much of it pressing and so much of it meaningful. So I don't know if that's just talking about, you know, the game awards in December and announcing the Xbox and the physical release and all that, or if he's talking about, you know, Larian kind of switching gears here and getting to work on this next project. I don't know, but either way, Larian is staying busy. And that's basically it for this video. Go vote for Baldur's Gate 3 if you think they should win in some or all of those categories. I will leave a link down below to make that easier for you to find. And you better believe it. Once we start getting information and trailers on Larian's next project, I will be covering the crap out of it right here on this channel. The lead up to the Baldur's Gate 3 launch was such a fun time, especially for this community. And I think we can probably relive similar times with Larian's next game. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring this video. I'll catch you all on the next one.